So in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly wire the backs of your paintings. Um, so in this example, I have a um, canvas board that I created using um, plywood that's half an inch thick. Um, and then I also added a cradle to the back of the panel. I'll show you that here in a moment. Um, first, I wanted to show you the tools that you're gonna need to be able to do this. Um, this is one way of adding a wire to your painting. I think it's one of the most secure ways that provides the most insurance that if your painting is hanging in a show, it's not going to fall off of the wall during a show and potentially harm the artwork or the gallery floor um, and you know save yourself um, from a lot of those sort of headaches. Anyways, um, so what you're gonna need are a pair of wire cutters. So this is a multi-tool that I like to keep with all of my framing gear. Um, it's really useful for a lot of different things, but it has wire cutters into the pliers. So I have mine here. Um, I like to purchase my hanging wire in bulk from a company that I'm forgetting the name of right now. Um, the spool that it was attached to was made out of plastic and it cracked and broke. So I had to re-spool it on a piece of plywood. Um, so this is my spool that I'm using. And I like to buy the picture wire that has a plastic coating around the outside. It's not just the metal wire. Um, it's a lot easier on your fingers. I think it also protects the wire a little bit more than just um, if it was a metal wire. So try to look for the plastic coating for wire. Um, you're gonna need a tape measure to measure where to place your um, holes for the screws. I like to use a pen or a pencil to mark that line on the back side of the canvas. Um, and then with your drill, you will need a drill bit that is a little bit skinnier than the size of your screws that are gonna go into the D-rings of your um, hanging hardware, which I don't know how well you can see this. Um, so I like to use a drill bit that's a little bit skinnier than the size of the screw. You don't want to use anything that's the same size or bigger because it's going to sit in the hole and be really loose and could possibly fall out or be pulled out through tension while the artwork is hanging on the wall. So this is a really important step. Make sure that you're finding a drill bit that's a little bit smaller. Um, and then to drill in your drill bit, um, or sorry, your screws, you want a drill bit like this um, that matches the sort of type of screw that you're using. So these are Phillips head. Um, one of the most common types of screws. You don't necessarily need a drill to put the screws in. You really mostly need the drill to, to you know, create your pilot holes for the screws. So um, having the drill for screwing in the screws is just a lot faster, but you could use a screwdriver or something off of a multi-tool like this. Um, and then the hanging hardware, which I can show you here, I also purchased this in bulk. It ends up being a lot cheaper in the long run. Sometimes you can buy packs of these from, you know, True Value or Ace Hardware types of stores. Um, shortly after I graduated from undergrad, I was doing research, I think through Amazon actually, where you can buy large quantities of both the D-rings and the screws that match the D-rings as a set. I think this whole package is enough for 500 paintings. So this will last me a really long time. And I wanna say it maybe was like $100 at the most, could have been closer to $80. Um, the reason that's important is because then each of these pieces becomes a lot cheaper when you buy in bulk. Um, you know, if you buy, let's say enough hardware for six paintings or four paintings, that could be $10 um, at a hardware store, maybe $8 at a hardware store, and it becomes a lot more expensive per piece. So something to look into if you're planning to make a lot of paintings or if you have a big show coming up, you can save a few extra bucks um, or a lot of extra dollars when you buy in bulk like this. Okay, um, so now I will go on to our first step in actually applying our hanging hardware. Okay, so I'm using a canvas that is currently unpainted. Um, I just finished allowing the surface of my oil primer on this canvas to fully um, dry. So now I can begin my painting. 
The reason I'm putting a wire on the painting now is so that way I can work on the painting while it's attached to my studio wall um, and just get used to having it on a wire. So the first thing I did was wipe off my surface so I don't want to really scuff up or you know, get too much dust on the surface of the painting. Um, and I've actually already gone ahead and marked my line where my screw is going to go. And what I typically do is I'll measure the height of my canvas. So I'm planning to keep this in a landscape format where the longest dimension is on the horizontal sides and the verticals are both at 22 inches. So take your vertical dimension and divide it by three and make a mark that's roughly a third of the way down from the top of your canvas. This is the general rule for most paintings um, when people are hanging. So for me, I'm going to make a mark right around seven inches here. Um, 21 inches would be seven. So this is just a little bit over that. And I think this is gonna be plenty of space. So I've made a mark on both sides of my canvas right at seven inches. And this panel that I created, like I said earlier, is made out of plywood, which you can still see here. It's been sealed, but the cradle or that extra lip around the outside of the canvas was made also from plywood pieces that have been glued and air nailed from the back to create this extra um, width to the canvas and a little bit of extra room to be able to add screws or to attach the canvas into a frame things like that. So it's an inch thick along the outer edge. And typically I keep the same width for my cradle all the way around the paintings, but this one was just made with some extra scrap pieces. So I have a little bit more room than, than usual, but typically you want to take your D ring and sometimes you'll notice that the D rings have this little curl where it attaches to the piece that actually goes into your canvas. And that's pretty important because you want to make sure that the flat side, which is the top right here currently, is gonna lay flat against your canvas. And then this round lip here is going to face up. Um, if you put it upside down, this wouldn't be flat against your painting and it could potentially you know, bend or twist or break um, down the road. So to have the strongest connection, make sure that you have the flat side flat against your painting. Um, that way everything sits nice and smooth and keeps the tension properly attached to your hardware and your painting. So what I like to do is I'll take my D-ring and I'll kind of eyeball where I want to place it on my cradle. So for example, if I was going to put it on one of these narrower sides over here, I wouldn't want this to be too close to the outside of my cradle, but also not too close to the inside of the cradle. You wanna to try to keep the pilot hole somewhere in the middle, um, just to ensure that the strength of your cradle is not being uh, compromised, right? So in this really wide profile of this cradle, it doesn't really matter as much. Sometimes what I'll do, especially if I'm working on a smaller canvas that has a cradle like this, I'll put my pilot hole like a half an inch from the inside edge. That way my D-ring has a little bit more room to kind of slide around or move. It's easier to get to if I'm working in a smaller canvas. With a large canvas like this, it doesn't really matter quite as much. So I'll probably put mine somewhere right around here. The other thing to keep in mind when you're choosing where to place your D-ring is to consider how you plan to frame the artwork or how you might want to allow a collector or a curator to frame your painting. Now, I've been framing a lot of my artwork in float frames, which have a very narrow profile. Um, and on the reverse side that actually attaches to the paintings, um, I generally have about an inch and a half wide piece of wood that has holes pre-drilled into it to then drill into my cradle panel. Um, to help us visualize this, I have a piece of scrap wood here um, that's about this, the width that I'm referring to. And typically what I'll do is, um, you know, I'll lay that piece of wood or I'll, I'll kind of plan this out ahead of time by taking the piece of, you know, framing material and hold it to the back side of the canvas to sort of think about how much extra room I might have on my cradle. And the important thing with this is that 
when hanging your paintings, I've come to notice that there's a big difference in the way the paintings will sit on the wall or against a wall. If I'm attaching my D-ring and wire straight onto the cradle versus to the frame. And I've been noticing at a lot of my recent shows over the last year that when I put my D-ring on the frame, the painting tends to lean away from the wall a little bit more um, versus when the D-ring is underneath the frame, that little extra depth where the wire sits closer to the painting than to the wall keeps the painting pulled against the wall and is a bit more taut. Um, so that's one tip that I have, something to consider. So that's the other reason why I'm adding my D-ring and wire right now, as opposed to putting it on my frame. Um, okay, so once you've sort of figured out how far in you wanna put your D-ring, um, this is about a little over three inches wide, and I'm gonna place my hole right at the one and a half inch mark. So um, just to give you some frame of reference for what my dimensions are. Once you have your placement sort of figured out, you'll take your drill and your, your little drill bit. And I like to keep my D-ring on my uh, cradle while I actually go in and um, start drilling into the canvas and then into the cradle. Now you wanna be really careful not to drill too far down because you could go through your wood into your canvas and through your painting. That would be really detrimental to your, your project. It would also create a lot of issues that might take up a lot of your time in the future. Just a lot of things that will not be good. So when you're doing this, try not to really push down really hard. Sometimes I'll let the weight of the drill do a lot of the work in, go, in moving towards the tabletop surface. Gravity can kind of help sort of take over. Um, a good sort of general rule is to start really gentle and then once you get a feel for the speed and for how quickly the drill bit is moving through your material, then you can determine how much pressure to use. Um, the other thing is that you really don't need to drill all the way down to the depth of your screw. Um, you know, you really just want to create a little pilot hole that starts to clean up the path that your screw is going to go in. And when you don't pre-drill a hole, what tends to happen is you, you can easily split the wood fibers of your material and create really long cracks that run through your board. And this can happen in plywood. I think this can also happen for sure in solid boards that are all one piece of wood. Um, so a really good habit is to pre-drill your holes whenever you're attaching hardware like this into your, um, into your canvases. So then I'll just take the screw with my fingers here and find the hole and just kind of start to um, twist it into the hole just so it can kind of sit there. Um, it might fall over and that's okay. But um, what I'll do next then is measure in an inch and a half over on this side along my first mark at seven inches. I'll grab my other D-ring, hold it at that intersection and drill my next hole. Okay. Now I can take this out. You don't wanna lose those, so make sure that you're putting in a place that you're gonna see it and notice it again. They're really small and it's definitely annoying when we lose track of that kind of material um, or tool. Then I'll just go ahead and uh, add the screws in. I can actually bring my settings down here from uh, the higher settings from when I was drilling in holes for something else. Okay, something else that I did not mention that's really important is when you're picking your hardware, let's say you can't find you know, a product that sells the D-ring and the screws all in one, so you know that they're compatible. Let's say you have to buy them separately, right? Now, the most important thing when you're buying your screw is to make sure that the length of the screw is not gonna be longer than the depth of your entire painting, right? And again, this is something that you can also do on stretched canvases. This isn't just for cradled wood panels and you know uh, wrapped canvases around panels. This is also what you're gonna do if you're attaching hardware to a stretched canvas as well. But either way, you wanna make sure that you are not using screws that are longer than the depth 
of your canvas. So these are half inch screws and I already know since I was since I'm the one who created the canvas that my cradle is half an inch and if my screw somehow made it past that cradle it would just go into my panel and not actually into the canvas of my painting or into the surface of the panel. Let's say I wasn't painting on canvas and I was painting on the panel. Um, I know these screws are not going to be anywhere long enough to you know, compromise the surface of my painting. Um, so if you're buying hardware separately, that's one thing to make sure that you're considering and um, preparing for. Now, I need to... Sometimes when you're drilling through canvas, it can be difficult to see the hole. And if you just started drilling in with your drill, you might actually be not drilling into your pilot hole and drilling into the wood. So I like to, again, set that up by hand first. Okay, now it doesn't really matter a whole lot how tight you make your screws. Um, sometimes I'll keep mine just loose enough where I can still push the D-ring around um, with a quite a bit of force. I don't like them really loose because it they get kind of loud and they make a lot of noise when you're moving your paintings around sometimes. Um, so I prefer to just kind of make them fairly tight but not so tight that they can't move. Um, and so then... Once your D-rings are both in, you want to cut your wire and begin um, attaching your wire to the D-rings. All right, so when I cut my wire, what I typically like to do is give myself three or four inches past the D-ring um, on both sides. So I'll, I'll hold it on one side like this, I'll pull it down the other way, and then with my fingers, my thumb and my forefinger, I'll kind of stop it where I think it it, it will be a good length. Um, not too long, but not too short. It's always better to have extra than not enough. And I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But where I had pinched my fingers, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of make a little crease in the wire. That way I know where exactly I want to cut this and I'm not confused or making the wrong cut. And then with my wire cutters, I'll just go ahead and cut my wire and re-spool this around my makeshift spool and get this out of the way. So then, you know, you'll take your wire. Um, sometimes I'll notice, depending on my, my uh, wire cutters, this, this cut will be a little sharp and jagged at times. It's a little bit easier to clean it up with your wire cutters and go back and sort of pull, trim off a little bit from the end to try to get a cleaner cut. It's easier to do that now than to do that once you actually start twisting your wire on here. So just check to make sure your ends aren't too sharp. Some artists will attach like electrical tape or clear tape or something to kind of create a softer um, point to the end of your wire because you know if you're sending this to a show you don't want to potentially stab the uh, you know um, gallery workers um, while they're hanging your, your painting. Okay. Um, so once you're ready to actually go in and attach your wire, you'll take you'll start with one end. Let me move my camera down a little bit lower so you can see this better. Um, now, what I like to do is feed my wire through the D-ring up through the bottom, and then I will leave like like I said three or four inches, um, and I will fold it over, just like this. Maybe I should put this at more of an angle here. So I will fold it over and then I'll take my short end, wrap it underneath the long wire like so, and then feed it around and in through that loop that I just created. So we're essentially creating a little knot here right onto the D-ring. And this was something that I learned um, as a senior in undergrad. Prior to learning this, I would just go in, wrap the wire around the D-ring, and then just immediately start to twist the wire around the long part with the short end. And I would notice that if I pushed up like this, that wire wrapping would start to come undone, and eventually I would be able to just pull the wire right off the D-ring, which 
is not a, a good sign. It's not what you want, right? So this is a little extra safety precaution to help ensure that if this wire ever untwisted, it would hit this knot and it would take a lot of force to really pull this out, pull the wire out. Um, that doesn't mean that the screw can't come out, but at least you're saving yourself in one way um, by protecting the, the wire, the way the wire is set up. So now once that knot is created, I will start wrapping underneath the long wire and then just try to wrap this as tightly as possible and as uh, clean as possible. Sometimes I will twist it like this and then with my other fingers, I'll pull it back. Um, some people will say you really only need like three or four wraps. I just like to just wrap, you know, almost the whole end of my wire. I don't think it hurts anything by doing this. Um, sometimes if I've accidentally cut too long of a wire and I still, like let's say I hit this point and I still had this much wire, I would just trim off that extra wire and then wrap the last little bit. So um, that'll tell you what to do there. Now I'll move over to the other side and do the same thing. But since you've seen it, I won't move the camera. The important thing here is once you pull it through, to really try to pull it tight and then crease it over the D-ring before you wrap it around. Um, I found that it, it does help to try to keep the wire fairly tight. This is something that um, rarely do I ever have a painting where the wire is really, really tight and really, really straight. There's always a little bit of give like this. In my paintings, it's really hard for me to pull it super tight. And part of me actually is has theorized that there's bad results in the way that the painting hangs if the wire is too tight or too loose. So um, who knows? I mean, I haven't taken the time to actually experiment with this, but typically I kind of sit somewhere in the middle between really taut and, and really loose. Um, my preference generally is to um, avoid having my wire touch like the cradle of my paintings or the frame of my paintings. I like to have a gap between the frame and the wire when it's pulled tight. Um, mostly out of fear that if the wire lined up with the panel or with the frame, that whoever is hanging the painting might accidentally hang the painting off of the frame or off of the cradle thinking that they're hanging on the wire. So that's one of the reasons why I always try to create a bit of a gap. So that way they know for sure that the painting is hanging on a wire. Um, it's a lot harder for a screw head or nail head or one of the, um, those like, I don't know if I have any here. Those, um, oh, I forget what they're called too. Um, doesn't really matter. Wire hanging kind of hardware like L shaped um, pieces. It's hard for the wire to come off of those. It's a lot easier for a piece of wood or part of a frame to fall off of, of those um, pieces of hardware. So, okay. Anyways, this looks pretty good. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll lift up my canvas and hold it just by the wire. And I'll sit here for, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds and just try to see if I notice the wire unwrapping or sliding. If it feels like my hand is moving, excuse me, closer to the top of the canvas, then I'll reconfigure things and unwrap and, and, and sort of retie things. But right now it looks pretty good. It doesn't seem to be moving at all. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I forgot to mention is that for your hardware and your wire, when you're purchasing both of these materials, they will state how much weight that they typically can hold or are estimated to be able to hold. And um, most of the time you don't really need anything, you know, for a painting like this, I wouldn't use wire that can hold more than 20 pounds for sure. Um, you can buy wire that can hang 100 pounds. Uh, it's really thick. Um, and then they have wire that's geared more towards 10 pounds and five pounds. So. 20 pounds for me generally gets the job done. Um, since I've started painting on 
cradled plywood panels like this, my paintings have become heavier, so it's sometimes more of an issue once the frame is on here, but I haven't had any problems with wires coming undone. Um, and same goes for the hardware. So, you know, there these are a pretty average size D-ring that I was showing you. I have also purchased D-rings, um, actually by mistake, that are really, really big um, in comparison to D-rings that are around this size. You can really see the difference here. Um, you don't need huge D-rings for paintings around this size. This size is definitely going to be plenty, um, plenty, you know, strong. And, uh, you know, it really kind of depends more if you're painting really large and, you know, let's say you're framing a really large painting, that's when you're going to want to spend a lot more time making sure that you're getting hardware and wire that can hold the weight of your work. Um, but that's pretty much it for wiring a painting. Um, whether you're working on a panel or you're working on a stretched canvas, this is something that you can do. What I would not do is try to attach D-rings and wire to a piece of masonite. So if you, were if you wanted to hang a painting that's on masonite that's not cradled, what you would need to do first is to cut wood you know, with a board kind of like this. Um, at your at your lengths at the very least on the sides that you're gonna put your hardware so if this was a masonite panel on the reverse side of the painting I would cut a piece of wood that is pretty close if not the entire length of my side over here and then one over here um, if you have enough wood I would go ahead and do the whole thing all the way around just to keep things a bit more flat sometimes if you only add wood on two sides the the panel can start to warp or not hang flat against the wall so if you have enough wood make sure to go all the way around your canvas some artists will only cut a small piece of wood like this long and glue it to the back of a panel and then put their hardware in the block so it looks like the panel is floating on the wall if you do it the right way it can look actually really nice it's not really the most permanent way to, sh to show a painting um, but if you if you don't have a lot of time or material that's a really good solution so the point is you want to make sure that you're working on material that's like an inch thick or three quarters of an inch thick whenever you're going to be attaching hardware. Otherwise you run the risk of drilling all the way through into your painting. So that sums up this whole video. I know it was a lot longer than it maybe needed to be here, but um, I was able to answer a lot of specific uh, topics and questions. So I'm really happy that I took that time to do that. Hopefully this was enough information to um, answer any questions some of you might have about adding a wire to your painting. Um, have fun, um, good luck, and let me know if you have any questions. So, have a good day.